All right, let's talk about PC performance as it relates to racing simulators. So as everyone knows, racing simulators are quite resource hungry programs. They use a lot of your CPU and a lot of your GPU. And they do this because they need to provide you with a smooth frame rate. We're not gonna discuss whether you should be getting 60 or 100 or 200 frames per second. Uh, that's up to you. What we wanna talk about is once you have a frame rate that you are comfortable with, how do you make sure that you have a smooth frame rate? And specifically when you're running other programs like the Z1 software, um, most of the time everything's gonna be fine and you'll run uh, the Z1 software, it'll use a little bit of your CPU, but it's not gonna affect the um, performance of the sim. However, in some cases, depending on the hardware you have or the settings you're running within the sim, there may be occasions when the frame rate dips a bit or you get slight stutters. So what do you do then? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. What you can do to maximize the performance of your uh, PC when you're running more than one program at the same time. So in our example, we are gonna have the sim running uh, right here on the computer. And then on a second monitor, we're gonna have the Z1 dashboard running for different instances. So let's say uh, running these four instances does have a small effect on your sim. Perhaps the frame rate drops uh, slightly. What are we gonna do about that? So the first thing is we can go to the Windows Task Manager, uh, which you can get to by right-clicking on your taskbar and choosing Show Task Manager. Uh, once you bring that up, you can look at the Performance tab. And that is gonna show you uh, the current CPU usage, along with each individual core within uh, your computer. Now this is gonna be different for uh, a lot of computers. You might have uh, more than one processor, you might have two, four, or eight cores, depending on uh, the system configuration of your hardware. But the basic concept is the same. And uh, this image right here is what it looks like on Windows 7. And this one is what it looks like on Windows 10. So most programs, most of the time, run on the first uh, CPU. Uh, by default, that's what Windows does. It runs everything on that CPU. So you're gonna have the SIM running on that CPU, and you're gonna have all of the four Z1 dashboard instances running on that CPU. This means that you may have other parts of your CPU not doing anything. They're sitting idle, where they could be doing something for you. And this is what we're gonna use. We're gonna use one of those idle uh, cores to run the dashboard software. And that frees up the first core to run just the sim. So the first question is, how do you determine which cores are not utilized? Because those are the ones you're gonna to want to assign to the dashboard software. So in this performance tab, you can see that there are a couple of these CPUs uh, which are at zero in the graph. Those are the ones we're gonna target. So it doesn't matter which one of these you use, so we're just gonna pick the first one that uh, is not being active at the moment. And they're just numbered uh, zero, one, two, three, four, up to however many you have. So on yours uh, machine, if it's the fourth one or the fifth one, just make a note, um, and it's one minus whatever that is. All right, so if we go to the applications task, you'll see the uh, Z1 instances uh, displayed there. So you right click on the instance and you choose go to process and that takes you to the processes tab and uh, highlights the instance that uh, you selected in the applications tab. So then what you do is you can right click on the uh, instance and choose set affinity. Once you do that, you get this small screen here, which lists all the processors. So by default, Windows will just choose what it wants and everything is checked. But if you uncheck the all processors and then specifically check just the CPU that you had noted was idle before and click OK, that will tell Windows that you want to run the dashboard on that processor. So do that for all of the uh, instances that you have running 
And then when you go back to uh, the performance tab, you'll see that the um, CPU that was not being utilized before now is being utilized. Uh, and the overall CPU usage on the first core is now lower uh, because it only has to run the sim, doesn't also have to do other things uh, that the dashboard software is going to ask it to do. So with this change done, when you get back in the sim, you should see um, a smoother frame rate. It's probably not going to raise your frame rate, but it will just keep it at whatever your level is. So if you've capped it at, say, 100, it should more consistently stay at 100, and you might not have drops down to, say, 90, or whatever you were having before. Now, we do have to say that this is not a permanent change to the processor which the application runs on. The next time you run um, the dashboard software, or any other software that you did this with, you will have to do the process again to put it back on the uh, core. There is a way to make it uh, automatic. That's for another video, uh, because it does involve a little bit of uh, Windows trickery and programming to tell uh, Windows what processor to run on when you start the application. But for now, in this video, we want to talk about just the general concept of using different cores to, their, um, to be most efficient on your uh, computers. So this was a uh, quick video, but hopefully uh, helpful in determining how you can get the most out of your computer system when running a racing simulator and the Z1 software at the same time. Please uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll have more videos coming up discussing uh, all sorts of things about the dashboard software, the analyzer, and how they can help you get the most out of your sim and real-world racing experience.